Okay, let's look at expanding some more brackets here. Uh, some more expressions. So we have 4x minus x multiplied by brackets 3x minus 2y plus 4. So this minus x has to be multiplied by every term inside the brackets. So let's do that. The first thing we do is we don't do anything with the 4x because this is a term separate from this minus x multiplied by the brackets. Minus x times 3x is going to be our first expression that we're going to multiply. We're going to multiply this minus x here by each of the terms inside the brackets, one step at a time. So the first thing we do is multiply minus x times plus 3x. A minus times a plus is going to be a minus. So we're going to get minus 1 times 3 is 3 x times x is x squared, so we're going to get minus 3x squared, where now have multiplied the 3x. 3x times minus x is minus 3x squared. Now we're going to multiply the minus x by minus 2y. Minus times a minus is going to give us a plus. And x times 2y is going to give us two lots of xy. And then our final expression will be minus x times plus 4. Or well, minus times a plus is going to give us a minus. 4 times x is just going to give us 4x. It's very important that we remember these rules of multiplication. When we have plus times a plus, we're always going to get a positive sign. A plus times a minus is always going to give us a negative sign. A minus times a plus is always going to give us a minus sign. And then a minus times a minus also gives us a plus sign. So what we can see is if the signs are the same, we are going to always get a positive answer. Minus times a minus is a plus. A plus times a plus is a plus. But if the signs are different or there's an odd number of minus signs, here's one minus sign. Here's one minus sign. We're going to get a minus in the answer. If we had a big string of minus times um, minus 2 times um, a minus minus 2. So minus times a minus minus 2. You can see here we've got 1, 2, 3 uh, minus signs. So the answer to this is going to be minus 2. Whereas if we had a minus times a minus 2, we would have a minus times a minus, which is a plus. So the answer here would be 2. Here we have two minus signs. It's going to give us a plus. Here we have an odd number of minus signs. It's going to give us a minus sign. So odd number of minus signs multiplied by one another or divided by one another is always going to give us a negative number. An even number of minus signs will always give us a positive number. Okay, now we have this expression here and we have to look and see if we can simplify it in any way. Well, yes, we can simplify it quite easily. We notice that here we have plus 4x, and here we have minus 4x. 4x minus 4x is just going to give us 0. So that expression disappears. And now we get our final answer, which is going to be... I'm going to write the positive expression first. We often do that in maths because it looks a little bit tidier. 2xy minus 3 x squared. Now what would I want to do if I wanted to simplify this expression a bit? Now I spend all this time expanding it out, but can I actually make it simpler? Well, yes I can because here I have an x term and here I have an x term. So what I could do is actually take the x outside the front of the brackets and say what do I have to multiply x by to get back to 2xy? If I multiplied x by 2y, I've taken the x out the front, what's left? 2y. What do I have to multiply x by to get back to minus 3x squared? Well, if I multiply, I've taken out an x here, so what's left? Minus 3. I've got 1x out the front, but I had x squared here, so there's 1x left. So x times minus 3x squared. So to go the whole way here in algebra, 
we could actually put a set of brackets back in and put anything common back in the front. And you can see that this term with brackets is much simpler than this long string of terms that we had in the beginning. So we've done quite an, uh, a, a smart simulation there, uh, simplification there, sorry. So uh, this is what we do in terms of algebra. Expand the brackets out, add all the terms, all the like terms together. Here we can only add x's to x's. We can't add x's to x squareds. Why can't we do that? Because you can think of as an x as being, if I say that x is 3 centimetres, what would x squared be? Well, an x squared term, if x was 3 centimetres, it would actually be like making a square that is 3 centimetres by 3 centimetres. So we would have an area term for x of being three centimeter, uh, 9 centimetres squared. 3 times 3 is 9. Centimetres times centimetres is centimetres squared. So this is why you can't add an x term to an x squared term, because the x term could be thought of as being a length, whereas an x squared term could be thought of as being an area. You can't add a length to an area, because here it's totally different units. Here is 9 centimetres squared, whereas here is a length of 3 centimetres. You can't add an area or a volume to a length. Then that's why you have to keep x terms very separate from x squared terms. Okay, good luck.